Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Deron with DeronSupply.com, where I'll help you design smarter, not harder. Don't be thrown off by the braids, it is still me. But anyway, check out this cool soft airbrush diffuse effect. Let's recreate that in Photoshop. So I've got a few examples here, and what I'll do first is walk you through the basic steps of the process, but it is not an exact recipe. I kind of encourage you to uh, play around with this and experiment to your likings. So I'll walk you through the initial process, and then I'll go over some other examples where I didn't exactly follow the recipe to a T, and maybe did something different here or there to yield a slightly different effect. But anyway, let's get to it. I was first inspired by this t-shirt, so let's create something similar. I'm in a 16 by 20 inch 300 dpi document. That's where I've got all the examples here. As you can see, this is what our final result will be. Uh, but I've got my image of the cherries here. I'm just using cherries to uh, pretty much recreate that t-shirt design that I just showed you. Obviously use whatever image you want. Later on, I'll go and show you some other examples that I did with other images such as a portrait and so on. So the first step really would be to denoise whatever image you're using. So I'm going to use my JPEG decompressor kit. You can go ahead and pick this up on my website to get some really easy denoising or decompressing of JPEG artifacts on whatever image you're using. Or alternatively, you can just go into filter, camera raw filter and mess with the denoising options inside of this. So that's in detail and the noise reduction. But I'm just going to use my denoise actions because it's easier to just do it in one click. So I've got my image here. I'm just going to run that simpler denoise action once or twice just to rid it of any compression artifacts. The reason we're doing this is because we're gonna be playing with the levels and the values of this image quite a bit, and we don't want any of those compression or low quality artifacts to be shining through. So once we denoise the image, you get a really smooth transition between all the colors and the gradients in our image. Next up, you wanna make sure that your image is fairly high contrast, and if it's on the darker end, you wanna brighten it as well. So for this image, it is not so high, well, it's kinda of high contrast, but uh, we're gonna increase the contrast a bit, but it's definitely a bit too dark. These cherries are, are pretty dark, and once you start doing effects on this, you're not gonna be able to see them too well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a levels adjustment above this image layer. And I'm just gonna bring the contrast up a bit. So I'll bring in the darks and the white highlights, and that'll bring up the contrast quite a bit. And then I just wanna brighten the image as a whole. So I'll take the midtones and drag them to the left to brighten our image. Cool, so now we're gonna merge or duplicate and merge this levels and image layer. So I'll hold on shift and select both of them. And then I'll do command alt E on my keyboard and that will create a merged duplicate of this layer. And I'll duplicate that again with Command J. So now I have these two duplicate layers up here and I'm going to nudge a levels adjustment right in between them. So we have our document kind of set up like this. So we got the original image, levels on top, our duplicate of that and the levels, another levels, and then the other duplicate. This levels obviously isn't doing anything right now and neither are any of these three layers. So we can turn these all off for now and we're gonna come back to them. So we're gonna cut to the chase here and do the gradient map, which is the most important part of this graphic. Let's go ahead and create a new gradient map adjustment layer. And we wanna get this as close to our reference as possible. So what I'll do is choose a slightly off black for the black black shadows here. So just something like really, really dark gray. This is a brightness value of 24, uh, but you can go pretty much anywhere you want. I just wouldn't go anywhere past maybe 30. So I'm gonna go for around, I don't know, 17, just something really, really low, just to get that nice off black. So it's not pure black. I'm gonna press okay on that. And then for the upper part of our shadows here, pretty much this first quadrant, I guess, we're gonna add another color and it's going to be a pretty dark cherry red. So I'm gonna choose a red here, but again, you want it to be very dark because we're still in the shadows quadrant or shadows half of the gradient map. So I'm gonna choose something around I don't know maybe right here maybe I'll turn it a little more pink too uh, yeah it looks pretty good to me we'll press okay on that and then let's move on to the upper midtone so that's somewhere up here we'll click to create a new color and we'll double click that to choose the color so for this one we want a bright cyan so we'll go up to cyan here and just choose a nice bright color something not too saturated so maybe around here let's say i'll actually make this a bit more blue somewhere towards purple a little bit because i think that matches better cool so this is the gradient map we ended up on it's just a slightly off black in the shadows a dark cherry red for the upper shadows and a nice bright bluish cyan for the upper midtones and then we just left the highlights at white so let's press okay on that we're all good there so you see we're already pretty much halfway there this image looks really good and a lot of that is thanks to the denoising that we did earlier kind of removing all that detail from the image let alone the compression artifacts it just makes this really smooth it gives it that kind of airbrush effect and it just makes it look really nice especially when paired with a gradient map but we're not done yet let's go back to this layer right here above the first levels 
we'll turn that back on and we'll go up to filter blur gaussian blur and we'll just choose something pretty high somewhere in the even triple digits maybe or somewhere around 80 something like that i'll go for maybe i don't know 100 press ok on that and we just want to set this layer to multiply so that's going to diffuse the fuck out of this image and it looks really cool but it's just a little too dark so that's why we have this levels here that we added earlier of course nothing's happening with it right now so let's turn that back on and just drag these mid-tones to the left to brighten up the artwork here so bang that looks pretty damn cool so now the colors and values are all kind of diffused throughout the image it's a really really cool look i'll show you what it looks like before and after so here's the before here's the after really really cool and of course we can intensify this as much as we like if you want you could duplicate uh this this blur layer that we have here with command j and it kind of doubles that effect and if you really want you could start layer masking in this effect where you want so if i were to create an all black layer mask on this by clicking on the layer mask and holding down alt and then i take a soft brush that's a brush with zero harness and just start painting in this effect where i want it to be more prominent again we get that really really cool soft airbrush diffuse effect and we can go ahead and adjust this levels even more to get it looking just right feel free to also play with the opacity of these blurred layers here so if the effect is a little too strong you can always just turn the opacity down to whatever you wish so cool we're almost there the last last step is sort of optional but i included it here just because i think it makes the artwork look a little bit better so if you remember correctly we have this duplicate layer from before this is just our original image pretty much and after we did all the blurring and whatnot we kind of lost some original detail in the image which was sort of the point but we don't want to lose too much detail so i have this layer up here that we can layer mask in to bring back any detail that we may have lost that we didn't want to lose especially highlight detail so what i like to do is take this top layer and make it really high contrast so we'll go into the levels with command l that i'll open the levels panel and we'll just bring in the black and the white until we get a really nice sort of black to white really high contrast gradient on this uh, so i'll bring that up a little bit till we get just a really high contrast image this looks pretty good to me i'll press ok and now we want to set this layer to screen and then we'll create an all black layer mask for this so that we can layer mask it in where we want so again, let's hold down alt and create a layer mask using this layer mask button down here. And that will create a black layer mask. And then we can take our soft brush. So that's just our brush again on 0% hardness and brush in the parts where we want that highlight or detail to be. So I'm just going to brush in the parts of the specular highlight here, say on the drips of the cherries or this really bright highlight on the side of it, just to get some more detail in there and some more variation. All right, looking pretty good. This is what I ended up on. Here's another optional, but pretty fun step. Uh, so of course you can always add grain to your design. So here's how I like to add grain. I make a 50% gray layer. So I'll create a new layer here and I'll fill it with 50% gray by using shift backspace on my keyboard. Make sure the contents are of course 50% gray and I'll go up to filter camera raw filter and I'll go into the effects panel here and just crank up that grain quite a bit I'll turn the size down and roughness up press ok on this and now we have a layer fill with grain I'll set this to soft light and that immediately gets that grain all over our artwork and it just looks pretty damn good so let's check out a quick before and after of all these effects versus the original image so this is of course our final product and here was our original image I'd say we did a damn good job now of course you probably want to add some text to this so feel free to add whatever compositional elements you want to add to this design i really just wanted to show you the actual image effect but yeah feel free to you know continue working on this and add whatever text or whatever elements you want that t-shirt reference from earlier did it very well so they opted for a kind of cleaner text layout but if you really want to you can go and add some text under all these layers that we just created so let me just make sure you're under the gradient map you can add whatever text you want so i'm just gonna put i don't know diffuse and i'll pick a nicer font than this let's go with micro grandma and if you blur this or add whatever layer styles you want to it you still have that gradient and noise layer on top so it's going to fit right in with the rest of the design this is a little trick that i taught in one of my reels i believe i don't know if i taught it here before but you could just turn the fill of whatever text or whatever layer down to zero and then go into the layer styles of that turn on a drop shadow just make sure the layer knocks out drop shadow check is turned off and then once you play with these drop shadow settings enough such as turning the size up you can kind of get a live blur on your text really really cool and of course having it under the gradient map makes it all blend well with the rest of the graphic so go ahead and experiment with that you know do whatever you like as promised i want to go over some other examples with you just to show you that there are other ways that you can use this effect and you can make it bend to your liking and to the specific design at hand that you're working on like i said earlier do not be afraid to experiment with this stuff and just play around right here i have another example that i did using the same technique so it's pretty much the same layer and let me go through it for you i'll start by turning all these top layers off so you can see how we started and how we got to where we are so this is the original image this is actually post denoising i already denoised the image at this 
point. I had to because it was a super, super low quality image, which is cool because you can use pretty much whatever quality image you want for this effect as long as you denoise it enough because you're going to be blurring the shit out of it anyway. So you don't really need all that detail in there. And on top of that, denoising it kind of helps get that airbrush effect that we're looking for. So yeah, just make sure you denoise the image. I would recommend picking up my JPEG decompressor pack to help you with that. Again, that's available on my website. So let's take a look at this design. I have the original image on this layer here. And on top of that, same deal as the first example or the walkthrough that I just did. So we have that same layer, but duplicated and blurred a whole lot. And we set that to multiply to isolate these shadows and to get that nice diffuse effect on our image. On top of this layer, I've masked out some parts of the image that I want the effect to be more prominent on. So this is sort of like what I just showed you where I duplicated the layer that we blurred and masked out some of the parts where I wanted the effect to be stronger, except on this layer, the blending mode is actually set to normal. So having it set to normal rather than multiply just helps us get a stronger blurred effect on the image. You can see that this is just the same layer, just blurred a whole lot. And then I turn the opacity down, obviously, and masked in parts where I want that blur to be. And I guess those was really strong, uh, kind of, kind of smudgy blurred effects, you know, wherever I masked it to be. Then on top of that, I just took a soft brush and painted in some stars or glowy elements here, just to add to the angelic aura of the image. I thought that looked pretty cool. So again, throw in whatever you want in here, throw in some stars, smoke, sparkles, whatever you want, just, you know, experiment. Then I have all the processing up here. So I have this levels just to make the image a bit brighter. And I have this texture and a gradient map. And that gets us this really, really cool final image. I did do some tampering to the gradient map here. There's no cherry red in here. I took that out because I thought it was a bit too much color. It was literally just faded black to blue to white. Super, super simple gradient map. And that's really it. There's not much to this effect. Of course, for this one, the texture is doing a lot of heavy lifting here. So feel free to add whatever texture you guys want instead of the noise, or maybe even as a compliment to the noise. This texture in particular is part of one of my new texture kits that's coming out. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It is absolutely full of all these really cool scanner textures. So it's definitely something you want to have in your toolkit. But anyway, I had set that texture to overlay or soft light and just added that gradient map on top, which brings it all together and that's about it guys thank you so much for watching if you got any value from this video be sure to like and subscribe i post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer don't forget to sign up for the newsletter at the bottom of my website for free design assets and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out